Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this video series about Identity Manager version 7. In these couple of videos, we want to show you differences between version 6 and version 7 Identity Manager installations and inform you about the new version 7 features. To be honest, this video series is unfortunately not produced for Dell Identity Manager beginners. We assume that you are an experienced Identity Manager expert interested to know what is new in version 7 release. Please follow me now just to explore the bits and bytes of our new software. The first question to answer is what happens in version 7? And here we can just ask the first question and say is Identity Management version 7 the breaking change or not? And the answer is yes and no. First of all, the no part. Identity Manager 7, from a business perspective, is absolutely not really different to a version 6.x. People who have worked with version 6.x are as well easily able to work with Identity Manager 7. Because from a business perspective, all the stuff is working like before. The main modification in version 7 for business people is just the new standard web portal. It provides the same functionality like in the past, but in version 7, all the stuff looks much more minded and branded now and nicer. And the standard web portal comes with some separate user dialogues for people who want to get the stuff a little bit more simplified than it was in the past. On the other hand, there's as well the yes answer. Yes, Identity Manager 7 is the breaking change. And this is from the perspective of system administrators or project administrators. That means for our PSO guys and partners outside installing one identity manager. Because from the engine perspective, nearly everything has changed. The complete database schema is overworked. The engine works different than before. The API is overworked. We are using .NET Framework 4.5.2 instead of version 2 in the past. And we have added an application server, which allows as well a three-tier architecture. At the end, the technical changes are just amazing. And I want to show you now a lot of these technical changes in the next minutes. A lot of people are talking about modularity in version 7. What does that mean? At the end, if you have installed version 6 of the Identity Manager, you know you install the complete solution, and that means the complete database schema and the complete software, just with one setup set. It is absolutely independent if you need only a part of it or if you won't need the complete full-blown identity management installation. You will install more or less the same. The difference is to set or to unset some configuration parameters. For example, here on the left side of the picture, you see the black and the green parameter unset and all the other parameters set. And what happens is you get the complete full-blown installation, but the black and the green part of the installation is just deactivated. This is how version 6 of the Identity Manager works. In version 7, the R&D people are going a completely different way. They started to break the Identity Manager into pieces. Therefore, the setup set decides which part of the Identity Manager have to be installed. And in difference to the version before, here you will install only the parts of the Identity Manager you really need. That means the setup set asks you for what is to be installed and at the end of the installation you get exactly that schema, that API parts and that software parts you need just to fulfill your goal. Two reasons for that. The first reason is the easiest reason to understand. If you just install the Identity Manager, for example, as an Active Directory Edition expert, then you are not really interested in all the other stuff that is as well part of the database and as well part of your process structure, but unfortunately not part of the Active Directory Edition. This is only stuff from your perspective that is additionally there. You will not use it and you don't need it, but it increases the complexity. So, the new modular setup set allows you now to decrease complexity and to work only with that parts of the complete installation you need for your business. The second reason for the modularity is the reason to make the complete identity manager world modular. And from a developer perspective, this is pretty good because we are working on the one identity solution. 
And the one identity solution will be born out of a lot of parts and these parts have to work together. That means as well that different developer teams have to work on different modules for the same complete solution framework. And to make that possible and easy for all of these different developer teams, it is absolutely mandatory to break Identity Manager into pieces so that you can assign different modules to different developer teams and these people can work together and develop their own modules. Let me have a famous example. For example, the Office 365 module. It's a module that is not developed by the core developer team of Identity Manager in Germany. It is developed by the Russian developer team. The Data Governance module, it's developed by people from Phoenix and so on. And because of that, the complete modularity was mandatory to be successful as well in the future developing the Identity Management Solution Framework, or let me say it in better words, the one identity solution. The complete modularity of the identity manager is not stopping at the database level. It goes down to the component level itself. And that means as well to the API, to the product logic, and to the DLLs and files and whatever. That means if you select something during the setup set, it will have directly impact on the amount of data that is installed on your machine. For example, if you don't select the black and the green module on the picture, you will not get files, DLLs, customizers and whatever have to do with the green and the black stuff. This is the same for all front-end types and services. That means the server service, which contains the connectors, the web application, which contains the capabilities of the web portal and the rich client front-ends, will only get the components they need. This is pretty new because in the past we have just installed everything more or less on every machine. Only dependent on different setup sets uh, we was able to select. Now we are able to do that much more granular than before. But how should this modular structure look like? That screen here shows the answer. The modular structure is a combination out of different modules combined by dependencies. For example, you are not able to use an Active Directory module before you not have installed the target system base module and that needs another parent, for example, the Identity Manager base module and so on. We divide two different types of module. The blue ones that you can select during the installation and the green ones which are modules automatically get installed based on a specific selection you have done before. The module structure on its own, it's completely independent from additions or something other else. Additions are just specific selections of modules. What we can do now in the future is to add whenever we want an additional module somewhere here into that slide or into the product and define the dependencies to other module if necessary. At the end, we have the capability now to increase the functionality of the product with different modules whenever we like. And that means not only to the next version of the product, that means as well between versions. For example, it will be possible with a modular structure to add a new synchronization module for a specific target system between version 7.0 and 7.1. What impact that will have on the additions? At the end, not any impact. The reason for that is additions are just a selection of specific modules. And whatever sales decide, they can bundle these modules, they could be bundled together and can create whatever named edition out of that. At present we ship the Identity Manager 7 with the three editions you know. The Identity Manager installation, the Data Governance edition and the Active Directory edition as before. For the future, we plan a lot of more editions. For example, there could be a TPAM edition or something like that. As we already know, an edition is just a selection out of modules. And this slide shows you, for example, the Identity Manager version 7 standard selection. This is what we name the full-blown installation. The first thing you can see on the slide are the dark blue modules. The dark blue modules are the selected modules. 
Optionally to the dark blue ones you can as well select the yellow ones. The yellow ones are as well part of the edition, but they are not standardly installed. You can select them later on if you want to and they will not cost additional fees. In difference to these yellow ones, there are the light blue ones. The light blue ones are as well additional modules you can select. But in difference to the yellow ones, these light blue ones could cost additional fees. Last but not least, you see two red modules. These red modules are modules you cannot select and you have not to pay for. These are modules for different technical purpose and they get automatically installed if they are needed. The same graph exists as well for the Active Directory edition. As the color shows you, there are just a few dark blue modules, which means these are the standard out-of-the-box Active Directory edition features. There are many light blue modules telling you there is a lot of stuff you can install in addition, but you have to pay for it. And there are just two yellow ones, which is the exchange module, which is part of the new definition of the Active Directory Edition, and the SharePoint module as additional part of the Active Directory Edition. Both of these modules are not standardly selected, but you can select them manually during the installation or install them after the installation without generating more costs than before. The red ones again are the modules out of selected by the system if they are needed. A free and additional feature as well to the Active Directory Edition, by the way, it's the data archiving module, which is the module that contains all the stuff out of the property logging of the identity manager if needed. The last selection I want to show you is the selection of the Data Governance Edition. As you can see here, we have more of these dark blue modules, which means there is more functionality in the Data Governance Edition than, for example, in the Active Directory Edition. From a Pricely perspective, the Data Governance Edition could be located between the Identity Manager full-blown installation, which is the most expensive part, and the Active Directory Edition, which is the cheapest selection of Identity Management modules. As you can see, the Data Archiving module and the Exchange modules are two free modules you can select in addition, and all the light blue ones are additional modules you have to pay for. It may be of interest how these additions and how these dependencies can be built. The good message is, standardly without any help from your side. You select something during the installation and at the end the system knows which dependent modules have to be auto-selected because they are as parent marked for the child you have selected. Whatever the complete stuff have to be organized somewhere. And this is done in some files. I want to show you now these files just in the setup set of the Identity Manager to make you aware of where the whole stuff is stored. What you can see here on the screen is uh, the standard setup set directory of the new Identity Manager version. The version itself, it's a developer build, so don't hesitate. It might be, look a little bit different on your machines, but the structure will be the same. You see the outrun axis, and the outrun axis is the stuff you will use to start your installation. But what I want to show you here is how all of these modules are just connected together. Therefore, I step into something that is named modules. Here I can see all modules exist. And if I just open one of these modules, for example, I can see two files, the module info VII and the module info XML. Let's start with the module info VII. If I open that in a standard text browser, you can see that is a text file. It looks a little bit like an ini file and it says here is the name of this module. It's active roles. It's of type target systems and the whole thing exists in German as well. The more interesting file is the module info XML. If I just open the module info XML, I can see a lot of more things about the whole module. I can see the author. I can see as well some customizer attached to that specific module. Customizers are product logic, as you remember. But in difference to version 6, where the product logic was just handled by two customizers and maybe a custom customizer, for version 7, each module have its own customizer. For example, the rs.customizer.dll, it's the customizer just for this specific module. 
But the most interesting thing is here the package dependency section. And in the package dependency section, you can see all package dependencies exists for the complete module. Down below, there are some more information just for every th stuff you will have to know. This is something that describes dependencies between the different parts of the installation. A bit easier to understand, it's here uh, the selection for different additions. I step back into the root directory of my setup set and this time I select the setup itself. And in the setup directory I can see a setup installer, which is at the end the installer that starts the installation, but I can as well see the subfolder additions. And if I open the subfolder additions, I can see four technical editions, Active Directory Edition, Data Governance Edition, Standard Edition, which is the full-blown installation, and something what we call the History Database. This is a technical edition. You cannot buy the History Database because it only makes sense in addition to one of the other editions. I just open, for example, now Active Directory Edition, and I find two, three files again, the edition info, the edition info XML and the settings XML. Let's start on the top. I open here the edition info VII. Again, I will find names in German and English like in the file before. I open as well the edition info XML. Here I can see dependencies to other modules. For example, RS, RPS, ATT are depending modules. I see as well some excluded modules. But I see at the end something that is called here the settings file. And this is something you have to know. There is a difference between installing, for example, an Active Directory edition and selecting the modules of an Active Directory edition manually. Because installing the edition, this setting file will be executed and selecting manually modules like for example seen in some screens before, to get such an addition will not do the same because the installation or the selection of modules will just install all modules depending on the dependencies between the modules. What will be not happen if you just select modules, for example from a full-blown installation, is that the typical settings file for this installation gets executed. And the typical installation file at the end it's doing the following. It is just setting some configuration parameters. You can see them here. That means if you want to install manually an edition and you don't want to use the edition selector, then you have to do the configuration and the package selection on your own. Both is necessary to get the edition. Without that, you get something between the ins a standard installation and the edition. Or let me say it in other words, it is something like an unconfigured edition. Whatever, the best case is in the setup set just to select the edition and to say I want to have the full-blown version, the data governance edition or the active directory edition and to let the system make the changes as necessary. The whole stuff here is to show you that you can figure out what happens if you are interested in.